Okay. So let's take the first person. Nike, please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Thank you very much uh, for that presentation. So my question goes to the BA because when they were actually doing the... Nike, your voice is very low. Do you want very to... Low. Oh, sorry about that. How about now? Is it better? Is it better now? Hello, can you it, Not me? really, but just you try a me. bit more and go ahead. Don't worry. Oh, okay. So what I was going to say, because um, I think Tommy touched on it after the presentation. So um, it was regarding the, you know, when they were doing French planning. So I was expecting to actually uh, see that they would um, communicate the French goal to the team members before actually committing and before actually voting. Because I saw that they they voted first and then before they then went. So I was thinking when at what point should you you know communicate the sprint goal to the member of the team? Is it after or before? Well, but I just need more more explanation on that. So thank you. Um, Moja, are you happy to take that? Yes, yes, I can take that. Okay, so um, the the estimation of the stories does not um impact the goal, and I'll tell you why. Even if because for us to be able to commit to the stories, yeah, the commission of the team member to the story is not in the hands of the PO at all. It's in the hands of the people that are going to work on it. It's not even in the hands of the scrum master or in the hands of the um the BA. It's mainly in the hands of the developers and the QAs. Remember, they are the ones that are going to do the work. The developer is the one that is going to build that feature and the testers are the ones that are going to test it. So even if we know the efforts, knowing the effort helps us, which is the estimation aspect that we had to do before committing and then knowing what is our goal? What are we focusing on? Yeah. So if we know the goal before committing, our commitment will affect the goal. I'll give you an example. If the if the goal is I'm traveling to Nigeria, okay, and there are some steps I need to take to do that with some with the collaboration of other people. And I've looked at the situation. If if maybe my developer is the driver that is gonna take me to Heathrow Airport to go on my journey and other people are also going to do some things and everything like that. If um I don't know their availability, do you understand? To meet that goal and I still hold on to that goal, I won't go on that journey. I'll have a goal that I'm not going to go on to because I don't know people's availability or their commitments to carry out their own part in that delivery, in the delivery of that goal. So we need to know their availability. We need to know their capacity. Are they able to commit to it? So now when we know that, when we know the total um, effort is going to take me this effort, it's going to take me this effort, it's going to take me this effort, we still come back to asking all of them. There has to be an agreement. Are we able to commit to this thing that we want to do? We're able to commit to it. Now we go back to the PO. So the PO might have a goal. Let's assume we have more than three stories. We have about maybe six, seven stories. And we've looked at the capacity. And our, by looking at our capacity, we the team decided, the developers and the KWs decided that we don't have the, the capacity to commit to this. And they will negotiate with the PO. PO, we don't have the capacity to commit to this. Can we remove maybe two or three? Yeah. The two or three we're removing has to go out of that goal after we've committed to it. That's why the committing comes after. Because if the if we commit, like I said, if we if we put the goal in, the, the PO definitely or the BA might have had all those things they want us to do. So it might not just be the home page banner. Maybe she wanted us to do the home page banner and then all the content, the both the design and the functionality. And we've we've had that estimate, we've done the estimation We've come back and then we, the team has agreed that, oh, we don't have the capacity to do both the design and the functionality. Then we'll have to remove 
you know, negotiate with the PO to say, oh, we can't do this. We can't do both together and everything and all that. Uh, just so that in the situation we have, the team was able to commit to the the goal of the PO. And that's why everything worked together. But you might have situations where we need to negotiate with the PO to say, we don't have the capacity to commit to everything. So what can we commit to? We can only commit to the, the design aspect of things. We can't go into the functionality or content of things also. So that has to come out of that goal. That is why the goal was coming when it came in. After we knew what we were going to commit to, that is the goal we want the team to have now that this is what we're committing to. And for us to focus during the sprint throughout, this is the goal. This is what we want the team to focus on, that they are designing the landing page. We're not doing both design, adding content, and, um, you know, they, if you notice during the refinement, they were saying nothing should be clickable. It's just for them to view it. That is what we want them to have. That is the shared understanding we, have, we want to have about the goal uh, and the focus of, of what we're doing during the sprint. I hope that is clear. Yeah, very, very clear. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. You brought it home and it links to what I was thinking to of how to respond to that. So thank you so much, Moji. Um, no need to add. Um, let's go to the next person. Thank God you've responded that you're good, right? So we're going to Ian. Hi, Ian. Ah, you allow me. Uh, the first question goes to you, allow me, and the second, uh, question, second question will go to Moji. Um, in all the discussion presentation, which was absolutely fantastic, I saw the BA involved, QM, CM, but where do the PM or DM uh, get involved in this situation? That's question to you, allow me. And to Moji, about the voting, um, I didn't understand really what it means and what time do they vote? What are they voting for? Thank you. All right. Um, if you started the course, are you responding, Moji? Sorry, I'm hearing some echo. Okay. So if you started record the course with us, you'd have heard us say it over and over again that an ADM's position is not in the team, but will work with the team. You are not a team member. If you also see when we spoke about the dynamics of a team, we have the PO, we have the score master, and we have the developers. So that developers includes like the QA. I told you guys about front-end, back-end developers, full-stack developers, UX, UI design. It depends on the project you're working on. Some projects, you can even have a D on your project. You can have a B, anything, you know, different. You can have an engineer. You hear DevOps engineer. You can have different people on your project. So that being said, and um, for an ADM, an ADM is responsible for the delivery of that team. The projects they are carrying out, that ADM is responsible for that delivery. So the ADM is asking questions. Where are we now? Is there anything you know holding us back? Knowing the timeline and all that. And on the PM side, which is a project manager, it also depends. The project manager, now you are even in charge of the project. You are managing, you know, for all the scrum, you never see us use the word managing. But a project manager, see their name, even has manager there. You are the one managing the whole project. So in your course of managing the project, you can have several teams doing different things to come together. We even mentioned about complexity yesterday. It depends on how complex the project is. And also, with you, the PM, you are worrying about a lot of things. It could also, be, even as the ADM is worrying about some aspect of the budget, it could just be for a couple of teams. But a PM, the whole project, you are worrying for the budget, you are worrying for the breakdown structure, you are worrying for, you know, different things. But you are not a player in the team. You are... A manager to the team as a PM, as an ADM, you are also even, you know, like outside of the team, managing the team to ensure delivery. Everybody's focus is that incremental delivery. So you are working outside of the team to ensure that those people are doing the right things. Are working. Everybody has their own the responsibility. Please, can we mute ourselves? As an ADM, as a PM, you are working outside of the team, but don't underestimate your position in the team. If anything is going off, you are very, very responsible. That team must be doing what they are supposed to. You are one paying them, so you need to be sure that they are working for their money. You understand what I mean? I hope that's clear. This is me trying not to talk too much. Uh, absolutely clear. Absolutely clear. Thank right. you. Thank you. What did you go for your leg? Olu Akemi, right, can you be you muted, much. please? Olu Akemi, can you be muted? Thank you. 
Uh, allow me, do you want to mute everyone? I will mute myself again. Go ahead, Mooney. Done, I've muted him. All right, thank you so much, um, Ian, for, um, for that. Okay, so there is going to be a session on, I don't want to dwell too much on estimation tonight, so I'll just give you the surface aspect. Just know that in the course of your internship, you will be given a full um, length, um, shall I call it, tutoring on estimation techniques. So they will dive into what it means, how you achieve it and all that. Well, estimation is just um, a measurable value that you assign to the work that needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. For example, when Abimbola, when we looked at it, the story. So estimation that Abimbola is doing is just a measurable value. In this case, a number that you want to use to quantify the effort is going to take you to do what you need to do. Now that effort, there are a lot of factors that is that needs to be considered in you looking at the effort. You need to look at your experience level at times. You need to look at the information you have concerning that thing, the, the skills you have to be able to do that thing and all that. So that is the effort and that's the estimation. So we're estimating that this particular story that we need to work on, um, how, how many, that measurable value in number do I need to be able to do it? Okay, so there are some stories where Abimbola puts one. So she's looking at it that, okay, it's going to take me an effort of one to do this. So that doesn't mean it doesn't um, equal to, oh, it's going to take me one day to do it, okay? So like I said, there are some efforts, there are some there are some factors that are embedded in that number that is being picked. One is the the information you have. If, you're, if it is an unknown field, if she's experienced enough to do it, so Abimbala as an experienced developer can say, oh, it's going to take me just one, you know, an effort of one in just making measure of the number in order to be able to do this. And if in experience someone or somebody just coming into that um, organization, even though they are experienced, but still needs to learn to understand the system and how the logistics work in that particular team can give that um, story point a two or a three until they get um, experienced also or upskilled to be able to also say, oh, one, I can be, but I, like if we have two developers on that particular story or on that particular team and they are giving their estimation, they might have given different number. Okay. So, but I don't, like I said, I don't want to dwell too much into it. Just know that it's just a measurable value that we're putting into the effort is going to take them to, to work on that story, to do what they need to do, to carry out their task on that particular story. Abimala as a developer and then Rita and Tunji as QAs. I hope that um, give you a bit of clarification. Yes, today. yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate yeah. both of you. All right. Thank you, Moji. And just to add, don't worry. When you're doing it, more explanations will be done by your mentors when you guys are actually doing it yourselves. This will happen in another one, two weeks when you start sprint one. You will do it yourselves. As you're doing it yourselves, you'll be correcting you. Thank you. We're going to Vine. Vine, please go ahead. Oh, hi. Thank you so much, Shala. Um, Thank you guys for the presentation. Um, thank you again to Olawumi and Ian for asking two, of, two out of my four questions about the voting and the refinement session. So I'll just hit on the other two left. I'm just uh, wondering who is um, Azure DevOps uh, BPMN tool and who decides what uh, BPMN tool to use in the sprint planning and process mapping? I didn't see that in, in the play. And uh, just to add to the BA, you know, yesterday we were supposed to have something about uh, requirement and station and all that that didn't happen. For the people who doesn't know how that goes, we do not deny it, we touch on that. Thank you. Okay, I'll prefer to take this question, so I'll be very fast about it. Vine, thank you. For the last question, the elicitation was rescheduled. It will happen before sprint zero ends and is rescheduled for early next week because we want you guys to have an understanding of what you want to do first before we do the elicitation. So you have the elicitation early next week. So don't worry too much about that, but it's okay you brought it up. Um, thank you so much. Then on the part of the 
Uh, what was that question? Why is it running off my head? What was your first question? Uh, my first it... question was if uh, Azure DevOps is... Uh, okay, that's like fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. So, yes. As... To to use? So, project management tools, we the most common ones anyways, um, Azure DevOps, Jira, and Trello, and all those ones. But that's aside. So, I answered this question with a similar question yesterday. For that is the organization that actually determines what project management tool they are using. So if an organ if you get to an organization, definitely they would have been using one. So it's them that will decide that this one favors me. And funny enough, an organization might have started using Jira, and for reasons beyond them, with people's expertise and everything, they say, okay, no, we want to transition. It can be done to transition into another one, but that is not determined by the team. It is determined by the organization. This is the tool we want to use. This is the application we're going to pay for. They'll get the licensing for everybody. They'll do that. So that's the organization. You understand? But how to I deal know. with things within the team is the team that handles that. But for that one, is an organizational decision. So you won't say, I'm working in an organization. A team A, they're using Jira. Team B, they're except, except if that organization has all. Like, okay, you know what? Some teams can use um this. Some teams can use this. That's fine. But that decision still lies with your, the organization as to what application they want to use. Let me give a typical example here and here right now. We've told you that what we use here is Azure DevOps. So because you came in, we won't say, because you say you want Jira or something, we'll now use only Jira for no. The only reason we're showing you guys about Jira, because we're going to take you guys on Jira. It would just be briefly, you know, here and here, play around with Jira so you have a feel of it. So it will not be strange when you go to your organization because Jira is also wild, widely used. But for all your projects, your development work on, on Blue Sky, you're going to be using Azure DevOps because that's the tool we're working with. That's the tool we have licenses for. And that's where we have put you on. So that's why we're using Azure, or should I call it Azure? <laughs> but for the Jira, we just let you have a feel of it. So it's an organizational decision. Thank you. Next is it Claire Vine? Sorry. Yeah, it is. Uh, the follow up question I wanted to ask: Would that stop you know them from giving you a job? For me, I'm familiar with Lucid. Ba, 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 ba. Lucid is not a project management tool. Lucid is a whiteboard. Are you with me? I use Lucid in my organization. Lucid is my best friend right now. Trust me. <laughs> so I use Lucid, but Lucid is a whiteboard. You can use it for flowcharts. You can use it for, you know, like, for example, even this retrospective, that's where I do my retro. Funny enough, I did my own retro today too for my four teams. So yes, we use whiteboard. So Lucid is a whiteboard. You pick your tickets, you do this, you do that. Blah, blah, blah. There are lots of things. You can connect your Lucid to Jira. You can connect your Lucid to Azure DevOps. Different things that you want to do. You understand? So Lucid is not a PMO tool. It's a whiteboard. Secle? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Juliet, please let's try and, oh, we have so many hands up. Let's try and be fast with our questions so that we can respond quickly. Thank you, Juliet Schutz. Okay. Um, thank you, Moji and the team for that wonderful presentation. Um, some of my questions have already been answered, so that's great. Um, I've got a couple more. So in the during the sprint review, your demo was um, didn't happen because of the glitch. Does that then mean that you forwarding the URL and the spreadsheet to the PO and that's your review done? Or are you still going to try and reschedule it into the next sprint? So that's one question. Should I just ask all my questions so you can um, answer them all at once? That's fine. Ah, let me pick it up by one. My head is not that <laughs> Okay, please go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um. Two ways you can do this, the sending of the URL and the spreadsheet. You can send the URL, send the spreadsheet, and also do a video. You can send a video also. So in your video, you the, the developer would, there will be a voiceover, and then the developer would demo um what you should have shown the, the PO. Uh, yes, the PO can do that. Okay, so when that is done that is your review because that spreadsheet you're actually sending is to capture the feedback for the review okay so okay. that's done yeah. because if you're moving it to the end of the next sprint yeah you mm -hmm. you can do that that can be done also this is agile we're flexible okay 
So you can do that also. Then, but that means at the end of the other sprint, you'll be doing um review of two things: the previous one, mm, yeah, and then yeah. this other one. But yeah, why yeah. it's better for you to finish one before the other is there are some things that the PO might correct, might take to the stakeholder, get correction that you need to work on. Do you understand? Before you mm -hmm. can continue the building. So if mm -hmm. whatever you need to correct, it depending on the other things you've worked on and you've just gone ahead and developed that. We don't want it to turn it to kind of a waterfall system where we're just building and then we're not actually getting feedback on whatever we've done because Agile is all about do it incrementally, get the review, uh, do your adaptation before you continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, okay. you're sending all those information, getting the feedback on the on the spreadsheet and working on it during the sprints. Now, when you go into the next review, uh, for quick at the end of the other sprints, you can now say, oh, this feedback we got from you, this is the adaptation, this is what we've done. Oh yeah, this is what I want to see. That's fine, we'll sort that aspect out and then okay. we can now continue with the review of the new sprint that we've just finished. Perfect, okay, thank you so much. That, um, that makes um, a lot of sense, thank you. Um, my next question was regarding when all the members of the team were imputing their task and voting and all of that, all on the same platform, the Azure DevOps. So is it that they all log in, do all the team log into the same board and do their entries or do they do it on your shared screen? I don't know if my, I'm trying, if, if my question is coming across. Yeah, it's, it's, so, your, your question is clear. Okay, okay, so as mm, everybody, I think by now, everybody should have received the invitation to Azure. Okay, okay. so what mm -hmm. we've just done this night is to work remotely. So when you're working remotely, Azure DevOps is a collaborative uh, tool, powerful mm -hmm. collaborative tool. So wherever we are, you can see, like, I like what you said. You said while we, they were writing their task and all that, you can all see, I'm just sharing the screen. So that mm -hmm. you can see what they are doing in their own hands. So wherever they are located at, we're all not in the same place. Wherever they are, yeah, they are yeah. still able to do what they need to do. And that's because they've been added to that board as a user and they've signed into that board with their personal with their personal login details and they're able mm -hmm. to do what they need to do on the board. Right. Okay. 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 That's clear. Thank you. Um, I had a question about the voting, but that's been covered. So the spreadsheet that you send to the PO um failing the demo. Is there like a, a standard template for that or is that just created project on project, scrum team on scrum team? It, it, it depends. You might join a team. They have, uh, if if they use it, they have it already. If they don't have mm. it, it's scrum masters creativity. You they would create one. Okay. Create one, especially when you have that situation. And that's why you have to be on your tools as a scrum master. You have to be creative. You know, you have, I, I didn't know Abimela was not going to um, um, demo. I actually thought there was mm. going to be a demo. And that can happen, like did you, did you said, on a project whereby mm. you we've already planned that she was going to demo. Something breaks, we can't demo. You mm. can't say, oh, sorry, we can't demo. So what are we going to do now? Let's start thinking. And you have to, you know, be right there and then thinking, be creative and put a solution in place. Mm. So that is okay. you. Number one, shielding your team so that it doesn't look as if they've not done anything and all that. Stepping up mm. and preferring a solution. Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, all right. One... Thank okay. you. Ah, so, sorry, can, can we make it <laughs> one question, please? Can oh, okay. we make it one question, please? Uh -huh. so because of the time, I think we'll, and if you possible, if it's possible, allow me, can we wrap it up within five minutes? Okay, please. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Think, you start midnight in Nigeria. Yeah, thank you. So that's why I stopped you, Julia. Juliet, apologies. You can still note your question and ask us in future time. Write it down, okay? That's, thank you. That's fine. Right. That's fine. Right. Thank you. Me, 30 seconds. Let's keep everything to one, one minute since we have five people. So your question in 20 seconds will answer in 40 seconds. Quickly. Oh, okay. Um, for some of us, we are interested in project management and construction, project management and renewable energy. Now from the play um from the drama tonight, does it play out the same way in every organization or in every sector? As my question, maybe automobile or construction, 
energy and the rest of it. Thank you. Honestly, if I want to really answer you straight and direct, it doesn't play out in every way the same way, but there's this similarity in everything. You will be able to understand what to do at that time. This is like a basic of, you know, what is happening in general, but it won't be the same. In engineering, for example, this is not what we'll be talking about. We are talking about, you know, um, models. We are showing you CAD and CA. It has, um, we're showing you like um, um, computer aided design, computer aided engineering. We're doing virtual tests. We're doing, so it's not going to be the same things, but what we are doing is the same. What we are doing is the same thing. We're having the same conversations, but the conversations will just be different. Then for all the renewable energy and all that, it depends. If you're working in agile, this is how the feel of agile will be. But if you're working in waterfall, it will be slightly different because waterfall, you're doing full planning. Then you just keep doing ad hoc meeting here and here and all that. When it's now finally time to test, you people will test. When it's finally time to end the, you know, the project you end. So everything has this feel when it comes to agile. It won't be something so different. No, all of us from here, we don't work in the same environment. I work in engineering, somebody else works in insurance, somebody else works in NHS, health, different things. But we learned it this way and it's working for us wherever we are. Look, I can assure you, Blue Sky builds you to that extent that you are strong enough to face any challenge in any organization. As long as you apply yourself, you're ready for the challenge. Once you start, even if you have questions, you have a world of knowledge waiting here for you to ask questions, especially when you're in advance, you know, because you're still in the community. But if you transition out, it's fine, as long as you know how to handle yourself and questions there and all that. So I just thought to put that in. And I hope that's very clear, Shubomi. Shubomi, quickly, is that clear? Is that clear, is that clear? Okay, Damn Lola, please. Okay. Yes, it is, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I'll be quick and direct. Also, if I may, to contribute to your answer, the process are the same, the environment are different. So whatever has been played out tonight is the process of what we happen. One cannot transfer that into the environment. Okay, my question. When they started the role play, wonderful role play, I'm a drama person, well, that was a fantastic role play. Uh, when they started the drama and the, the play out, they started with the uh, dev, uh, dev something, I've forgotten the name now, it's like I'm really, sorry. Azure DevOps. <laughs> Who is the originator of that design? Because at the beginning, we just saw that this, that design come up. And I don't in that team, that different team. Who okay. the, uh, Your own question can be answered in 10 seconds. So this originator, all of you will learn it tomorrow. So it will not be strange to you. So all of you will see it tomorrow at the setup of Azure DevOps. Please don't miss it. Try and join in so that you can catch everything. But however, the responsibility to make that board look that way is the Scrum Master because you're preparing the board that's you're preparing an environment for your team to work seamlessly. So that's onus on the Scrum Master. However, we are going to take everyone through it. So you'll be surprised when that um, knowledge you're gaining tomorrow will help you and your team in the future. Thank you. I hope that's clear. Uh, all righty. Um, you that question you put down your hands. Oluwambe, you said what? Then I will ask you that question later. Yes, please. Thank you. Oluwambe. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I want to say thank you to everyone and even uh, Sister Moji. Thanks for the wonderful presentation and even a cast. Moji, 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 not Sister Moji. Uh, so, um, so my question, I have just two questions here, but I think one is important. Though it might be funny. The the question is uh from the uh from the best relaxation activities. So when they were when they were guesting, when they were asking them to guess, I, I observed that they were trying to, sh they were shifting the, you know, the answer. The moment they say, maybe, maybe who's, who's that person that watched football, who's that person that watched movie, all those things. They were, sh is it the, I just sort of, is it the rules of the meeting? Because I don't know. Is it the rules of the meeting? So that, that, that is how it, it, it's been done. And that's one question. And the second question is, uh, will I, will, as a as a scrum master, would I be, would there be any team that I will, I'll be working with in the course of this? Uh, Oluwambe, one question. Oluwambe, 
one question, please. So, I just wanted to listen uh, to you. You'll be working with one team, so that's answered. You'll be working with one team. Then, secondly, on the retro, you're playing a game. There's no rule to it, as but your game might have a rule, but how anybody reacts has no special rule. They didn't. Please let me rephrase. All oh, what they did tonight, they didn't do any rehearsal. We just delve them in. Okay, let me bust your bubble. How about if we made a decision to have an extra QA and I just called him to join? When was that? Like 10 minutes to the call, like 10 minutes to nine. Okay, you know what? Join this call just for us to have an extra QA. They didn't practice nothing. This is them in their true self. I think I need to mention that they did not. The only person that prepared for this call is Moji because she's the scrum master. So she has to prepare the board. She has to make sure all the environment they used to work is ready. Now for the main project board, once you've prepared it down, it's prepared, right? So people just start imputing. So once you've done that at the beginning of maybe your project or whatever it is, that's done, that's given. But for the estimation board, you have to create it sprint on sprint. Um, For the retro board, you have to create it sprint on sprint. So she got ready, made sure everything is prepared. So when they came in, it's not like she'll be struggling to create estimation board or struggling to create, no. That has to be there. You have to give your team seamless, you know, transitioning. It's not when they are on the call. So the only person, every other person that joined this call freestyled because that is what they would do at work. So they just saw these stories now and we're breaking it down. You saw them asking questions. Nobody pre-planned for it. I think that's enough on that question. And I hope it's very clear. Olu Yeah, thank you. Bell Ashite. Quickly, quickly. Hey, yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Um, that was very informative. Um, please, my question is with, with regards to the retrospective. I just need a bit of clarity. And um, when Olawumi was doing the presentation concerning the retrospective, okay, she did mention that um during the evaluation, every team member is known and that there were even sticky notes that had maybe we know yellow is for Moji. Green is for Olu, um, Olaomi and all of that. Um, but during this um ceremony, okay, I, I did realize that it was more or less like anonymous. Like okay. with every section, they did ask um who put this here, who put this, who put that there, and all of that. I just want to know, is it um different when it comes to working remotely or I don't know if you are getting me. No, I, yeah, I get your question. Your question is very clear. So yeah. I use the whiteboard. That's why you could see all those designs. And most organizations, they prefer to probably, I would say most organizations, it just depends on your team. They prefer to use the whiteboard to, you know, have a, but using the project management um, board, it depends. Moji has okay. a toggle there. There's a toggle on that chart to make it anonymous or not. So the reason why anonymity is needed sometimes, when I put in there a bit that, you know, sometimes, whether you want to or yes, there's always conflict within the team. We taught you conflict yesterday. So sometimes I might be slightly, you know, maybe somebody really wronged me and I want to remain anonymous when I say my issue. That's fine. It's your choice. But if you also want to be clear and just face the person, you know, that's why they'll say, um, you know, um, call out the person with your full chest. It's also allowed. But as long as okay. you do it in a professional way, so it's fine. But sometimes it's just good to be anonymous so everybody can, you know, be free, explain when they want to explain. It's because they probably use the Azure board and all that. If they were using the, um, even if they were using the whiteboard, if they want to remain anonymous, they can remain anonymous. But the funny thing is all these tools, they have a toggle, even on the whiteboard, there's a toggle that will go there on Lucid to say everybody's name on the ticket should be showing. So anybody that puts up that ticket, the person's name will be showing. So if I want to turn it off, I can turn it off. Even the color coding, if I want to change the color coding that all of us, let's use blue, we can use it. So depending on what you want as your team, your choice, how you roll it. But sometimes for me, for me, just for me personally, what they've done is not wrong, is absolutely correct. But for me personally, the reason I like that color coding and all, just, you know, just to spice up things and, you know, everybody can be free in your team to have that conversation. You should get to that position in your team. You're not afraid of anything. Everybody can talk. Even when somebody gives you a blow or so, oh, you did this to me. I wasn't really happy about it. You guys can discuss it. Enjoy yourself. It's not a, it's not a room for, it's just things that didn't go well. So sometimes it can be a conflict. So anything, it doesn't really oh, okay. matter. Yeah, thank you. So very, when she asks, when she asks, um, who put that there, you can choose question. not to answer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you choose not to answer, that's also fine. 
But that's okay. what we are avoiding. We want everybody to be free enough to be able to speak. But if you choose not to answer, we can just explain it in the stride of what you have put there. You understand? Oh, okay. Thank you, you so much. A professional way to find out who the person is and ask, oh, what really happened? You know, okay. because she has the toggle, because she has admin rights. You don't have admin rights. So the Scrum Master can actually see such more than any other person. So with admin rights, you can find out who it is and have that conversation if she wants to. But sometimes you can just leave it anonymous. Even if you know how to check it, don't check it. Just leave it. The person doesn't want to talk, doesn't want to talk. Everybody's bringing the team to do whatever they want to do. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the last person should be Sultani. Oluwambe, you have asked the question. So please, maybe you should put your hands down. Sultani was the last person. No, oh, Chairman, can raise the hands after all. Sultani, please quickly go. We have spent way more than our time. I'm six minutes over time again. Sultani, please quickly. If you're not speaking, Chair Maka, please, quickly. Hi, okay. uh, please, I, I'm just, I just want to know the full meaning of EDA. I was hearing EDA, but I don't know what that means. Okay, it's not a full meaning of anything. It's a direct meaning. So if you open the page of where you are now, your, your system, the things that if you get a full landing page of a website, for example, all the things that are above, they are the EDAs. You know, where you can click and um, sign up, sign in. You know, anyway, those ones can be anywhere. But those things at the top part are header. The down one is footer. You understand? It, so they are saying head, your head, head. Header. It's not a, an acronym. Did you get that? Clear, 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 clear. Okay, header, header. I get it. Your head, your head. My head, my shoulder. Yeah. Your head, header. Okay, thank the you. Things are the top yeah. part. The footer is the things that are the lower part. Okay, okay, the I get things it. Are the upper Thank part you. of the page. Thank you. Sultani, are you speaking or not? Sultani, 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 my friend, are you speaking? Thank you. I think that's everyone for tonight. Any other question? I know some of us might still have one or two burning questions. Feel free to ask on the go when we ask. Does anyone have any question as we go on? So tomorrow we'll come back here in full stride to take uh so please, tomorrow, please make sure you buy coffee for Moji because she's going to take you on the full walk up of setup of Azure DevOps. Please, I'll advise you to join in. She'll try and be as fast as possible, but it's also, always also a very long call. So we'll try and start a bit early so that we can finish on time. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Thank you once again, the cast. Thank you all that asked questions or even listened or stayed till this time. Thank you, Deji. Thank you, Lady Parts. Thank you, everyone that spoke. Let's have a lovely evening. Thank you, guys. Bye. Oh, hold on, Deji. Quickly talk. <laughs> no, no, no. Just want to wrap it up. Okay. That, that, bye, everyone. So I don't All want right. to. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Let's call it. Bye. 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 Bye.